I'm calling to order this uh, hearing. This is a hearing or a roundtable, public roundtable of the Committee of the Whole. I'm Phil Mendelson, Chairman of the Council of the District of Columbia and Chair of the Committee of the Whole. Today is Friday, May 30th, 2014. The time is 2.12 in the afternoon, and we are in room 412 of the Johnny Wilson Building. The subject of this afternoon's hearing is Bill 20-799, which is entitled Employment Contract of Dr. James E. Lyons, Sr. as Interim President of the University of the District of Columbia Emergency Act of 2014. The stated purpose of Bill 20-799 is to approve on an emergency basis, which simply means that it requires a two-thirds vote of the Council, the employment of the employment contract submitted by the Board of Trustees of the University of the District of Columbia for the appointment or continuing appointment of Dr. James E. Lyon, Sr. as interim president for a period ending on or before August 31st, 2015. I just want to note, to, for clarity's sake, that the board has the authority, the unquestioned authority, to um, make this appointment. And the issue, the only reason why the council is involved is because the council has contract approval authority, particularly for contracts that exceed one year. Um, and um, so it's sort of in that light that uh, we are having this hearing. I have two witnesses, two witnesses on the list, Michael Syndrome, I do not see him here, and Dr. Elaine Kreider, who's the chair of the Board of Trustees of the University of the District of Columbia. I ask if there's anybody else who wishes to testify. Not seeing anybody else. Dr. Kreider, do you want to come forward? I also want to note that generally it is my policy that um, when we have a legislative measure before us and the committee of the whole, that we have a public hearing to afford the public opportunity to come and comment. Um, and the importance there is that there is the opportunity. Um, I had a hearing earlier today where I think I had one witness, and uh, again, it was about having the opportunity. Uh, so, Dr. Carter, you may be it, and I'm glad you're here. Want to proceed with the statement? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Want to proceed with the statement, and good afternoon, and it's good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I really don't have a prepared statement other than to um, thank you for your support of the university and to uh, just say that this uh, contract represents the will of the board in continuing employment of Dr. Lyons for the period as stated in the contract, not to exceed August of 31, 2015, and that to date, uh, Dr. Lyons has made a considerable difference for us in terms of our, um, certainly, relationships with city officials and in university operations. Uh, we need him to continue in his stabilizing um, effect as we move and transition to new leadership at the university. And that's it. The, um, yeah, I believe the contract is through August 31st, 2015. Obviously, the board is satisfied with the uh, work of Dr. Lyons, correct? Yes, we are. And he was first hired in March, or came on board in March of 2013? March of 2013. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you've had over a year of uh, experience working with him. Yes. Why don't I use this opportunity to ask you about um, the future, as in um, going forward. Uh, my understanding is that the board's intent when it first brought Dr. Lyons was uh, that he would be interim while the board began a search for a new president. That's correct. Um, can you tell me where that is? Okay, we plan to begin the search in the fall this year, um, sub September, October, and that uh, we will have a board retreat sometime in September where we really um, think through and be very deliberate in um, identifying the qualifications and what skills and what type of person we need to take over the helm of the university going forward. So the timeline is uh, fall 2014. We expect to have 
uh, a new person to be able to start by the summer of 2015. So there'd be some overlap um, between the two if we needed it. Is that tight? Be and the reason why I ask that is because um, my impression is that often when you're talking about the head of an educational institution, mm -hmm. not necessarily post-secondary, but chancellor of the DC public school system, um, that in the field of education, oftentimes it's like a year, the person has to agree to come on a year before they're going to come on because there's just that much time to finish up where they are. Mm -hmm. The next president may be somebody who's currently president at another university. and mm -hmm. So you'd have to make that decision early enough that they would be able to leave by August of 2015. Um, so is that timeline tight? Well, we've consulted with uh, two organizations that work with universities and conduct board searches for universities frequently. The Association of Governing Boards of Colleges and Universities and the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. They both assure me that we should be able to identify a candidate in, by January and that because there are so many uh, colleges right now, the turnover of college presidents is tremendous that, one, we won't have a problem identifying candidates, and two, the timeline works for us. That, you know, this idea of needing a year is not what they're seeing right now as the trend. So I'm, I'm relying on the experts to guide me in this. Are you going to, is the university going to use a, or the board use a search firm? Uh, we are going to use a search firm, and uh, we haven't, uh, identified yet, but I'm leaning towards, again, um, you may be one of those two organizations who have uh, extensive experience in working both with college presidents and with governing boards. Um, so we'll be looking at that over the next several weeks and making a decision on who's going to help us with that. This may be uh an impossible question to answer, but uh, I remember that um, I guess it was about four or five years ago when the Board of Trustees was searching that there was some um, controversy either within the board or it may have been outside on the board, directed at the board. Do you expect this process will be pretty smooth, that the board is working well together and the retreat will just crystallize issues, or do you already see that there may be some um, um, different, uh, widely different views? How do you see it? Okay. I, I can't speak to what happened four or five years ago. Sure. I, I was not on the board at the time of the last search. So, you know, by the time I came on the board, they had made the decision. Um, I understood the real controversy to the be within the government and not necessarily within the board of the university. I don't anticipate a board division at this time. Um, I, you know, I, I think the board deserves some credit here in that we've been able to overcome some significant challenges in terms of um, our cohesiveness and that we've been able to come together uh, where we have had to make critical decisions, and we've come together unanimously. So um, I think this board has demonstrated its ability to put aside any, you know, personal issues, personal feelings, or anything else, and make decisions that we believe are in the best interest of the university. And I think this decision will reflect that as well. Oh, well, that's good to hear. So, yes, I know that the search for the last president was... Uh, was a long time, was before you were on the board, mm -hmm. and um, I am aware that there was some interest in this building, I, and uh, I was not part of that, but I'm, I'm aware of that. And I'm also sensitive to the fact that we need to be careful. This is my view with regard to the council. I think it's shared by the executive. Uh, I don't want to speak for the mayor, but that our, our role is is somewhat constrained because the university is an independent educational institution and not a political agency of the government. 
So we need to be mindful of that, and I'm hopeful that the council is, has been mindful of that. I uh, appreciate but, that. But I'm hearing you say that um, where in the past there may have been some schisms in the board, that uh, the board has increasingly uh, overcome those and been unanimous in its decision. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that that is good to hear. Um, I also, it's my sense, and I just bring this up so that there's either dialogue or you confirm this, that the board has waited until now to begin the search because the board wanted the university to be on a better footing, clear with regard to what its strategic mission was or is, and uh, to kind of get all that in order and then have that to present while it's searching um, to be able to present that to a new to, to candidates. Am I, am I right in that impression? Yeah. I think there were two things that the board wanted. One was certainly to be clear in the mission and vision of the university. And so the planning process that we went through uh, takes us close to that. The second piece, though, was that we didn't know all the things we didn't know about the university. And we needed to have uh, a Dr. Lyons or someone like that come in and, and clean it up for us. That was our, our hope. That's what we charged him to do so that a new president stepping in didn't have to come in and worry about dealing with rifts and, you know, uncovering uh, procedural issues that affected the ability of the university to work uh, more efficiently and to put its focus on what it should be which is ed educating residents of the district. And so I think we are on a path for that. Um, the reason that we want to extend Dr. Lyon's contract is so he's able to help us get even closer than we are now. Uh, I don't think things will be uh, necessarily completed by the time the new president is selected and, and comes on board, but it'll certainly be a lot better uh, than it is today. I should ask two other questions. Uh, the contract isn't uh, isn't very expensive. I assume the university has all the the, the resources necessary to afford the contract, correct? Yes. And um, are you? This is a public document. Are you aware of any controversy around the contract? I've heard nothing. I haven't heard of any. Okay. Let me just see if I have any other questions that I want to ask. I don't think I have any other questions. Um, I'm glad to hear that the board is working well. Mm -hmm. That's kind of been my impression, and uh, that uh, there, there is a plan with the retreat and working with a search firm to uh, proceed toward a more permanent, right. what do I want to say, permanent uh, status mm -hmm. for the uh, president. I think Dr. Lyons has done a, has done a very good job, mm -hmm. and um, part of the purpose of this hearing is to see if people wildly disagree, and I'm not hearing that, so. That uh, concludes this uh, hearing then. Um, the record in this matter is going to close uh, next week. The, uh, we're not going to act on this on Tuesday, but uh, we will look to schedule this. I think we will have an additional legislative meeting in the middle of June, so we'll look to schedule this then. Uh, but for the record, the record will close on the Monday, June 2nd at 5 p.m. Unless there's anything else you want to say, Dr. Kreider, uh, that will conclude this hearing. The time is now 2.27 in the afternoon, and this hearing is adjourned.